Hello and welcome to a free v free cast on Grazark Undercity. Before starting off this cast, just a couple of notes. This Friday, normally I do upload a video, but this Friday is not actually going to be a video coming up just because I'm actually quite busy the next couple of days and won't have time to get that out. So to make up for it, there'll be another Faction Wars video on Monday next week. Second thing is, I know a lot of you have been requesting 1v1s, but unfortunately because there has been a massive lack of 1v1 replays, to be quite honest, there have been a but there's been a lack of 1v1 cast because of the lack of 1v1 replay, so I do apologise for that, but if more of you do play 1v1s, do send in your replays and hopefully we can get some more on this channel. But now back to the actual car starting off on the top side of the map fighting over the contested VP we have Neil Cyrus playing as the commando knob, we have Odd Nerd in the centre of the map playing as the Lord Commissar are going to be fighting over those central requisition points and we also have in the bottom side Cornholio playing as the Lord General going to be fighting over a contested power and also in control of defending the natural VP and trying to push the enemy's natural VP at the same time. Meanwhile for the red team we have Quixote playing as a tech marine on the top side of the map with his weird smiley face colour scheme here. We have Tom Walker in mid playing as a plague champion pushing up aggressively there to the blue team's power farm and finally we have the mighty penguin slayer Jake who's currently dead on the ground here in the bottom side the first engagement not going too well for him on his side. You know Korn is going to force him off and Odd Nerd is coming towards the centre of the map now with his Sentinel, the Plague Champion, making his way down towards the bottom side against the IG player Korn, the Plague Champion, with a Bar Spear already. It's very odd to see a Bar Spear rush so early on. The Bar Spear is not actually that effective of a weapon against IG early on. From the point of view that it's a very short range weapon, Guardsman and the Lord General alike will be able to focus down the Plague Champion before he can even get into range to actually use the Bar Spear. The last view, however, is very effective at bashing down generators and will come in very useful later on. And it'll be quite nice in tier 2 when a play champion can get the armor of pestilence and give himself some extra tankiness that is needed in order to get in range of those Garzim. But being that it's such an open map, the play champion will struggle to get in range. You know, Odd Nerd coming in from the side here, these Chaos Heretics are most definitely going to go down here, taking an insane amount of damage. The Sentinel can definitely chase, and Lord Commissar, if he uses his last pistol, can finish off the squad, and the squad is now dead. CSM are going to engage in melee combat against the Guardsman here while the Sentinel tries to poke away. The Sentinel does have its stomp ability. It looks like it will be off cooldown just in time for the CSM before they can even force melee, and they will lose two models. That is a big loss there for Tom. Right. Eldar is coming back into the engagement, the Sentinel will live overall and the CSM will back away. Meanwhile Cyrus pushing in very aggressively, there's actually a teleporter relay beacon here, which Chaos is not actually using. Grenade does get thrown down defensively here for Quicksoap, but I'm not sure that he can defend the Sluggers do come into the area and his teammates not jumping to the beacon, it's going to be very difficult to protect by himself. There are some Dire Avengers in the area, the Warlock is jumping in, Guardian Weapons team comes in to defend and set up in position. These Sluggers are going to potentially go down here, there's a lot of range damage available to finish off the squad and Cyrus being too aggressive there. Going to lose the squad but two Sentinels now really applying the pressure onto the Relay Beacon but there's units in the area to defend the Warlock with the Immolator. Also those Guardsmen away, Catachin's pushing in as well, getting a shotgun blast on site Guardian Weapons team which is actually taking friendly fire damage from the Immolate ability which does do friendly fire damage to all units including your own so you do need to be careful which area you decide to Immolate. You know, it's just a three man brawl down here fighting to force them off the beacon early on. You want double tactical marines, double CSM, double Dire Avengers and Guardian Weapons team, every tanky team here for red team whereas blue team given that they are Orcs and Imperial Guard, a lot of squishy models, but they are a lot more models in comparison. But with the green cover, with the Nurgle Worship here for Tom, with the Relay Beacon providing also some healing bonuses and reinforcement bonuses to Red Team, it's very difficult for Blue Team to actually edge even further forward, and Blue Team have taken the opportunity to capture the entire top side of the map uncontested. Our red team is cowering kind of around their beacon, unable to actually push away from their beacon, but are still able to hold their position, but are not able to expand any further than this position. Dire Avengers coming back out once again, starting to get the Warlock upgrade or the Exarch upgrade, whichever you prefer to call it. The Warlock Exarch does provide 
bonus range damage and in tier 2 does it provide the emboldened ability for the Dire Avengers also as well as a passive range damage reduction as well. But the Warlock very effective in both melee and ranged combat, it able to jump into melee combat leaping in like a Warlock would but actually doing a larger knockback radius from what I've seen of it. It does or has the ability to knock down multiple models, can be very effective at fighting other ranged squads in particular, especially against IG. The Cashins with the Owen Reliable are going to be knocking away that Havoc weapons team, but a Guardian Weapons team is now set up and these shooters are going to be forced to back away a little bit. Meanwhile on the top side though, Odd Nerd and Cyrus, by the looks of it, are going to apply a little bit of pressure from the top side of the map, forcing this power node to actually be rebuilt after killing the generator farm. Red team do have a single generator farm but that's not going to be enough here considering blue team do have two full generator farms and have also started to build a small farm here on the contested power but this flank could go quite harshly here. All the units are retreating away to the beacon but the flank has already started. Flame attacks come rains gain to get engaged by Catachins in melee combat. That squad does not need to be fighting in melee combat but Catachins with their power melee is going to be so effective against these tacticals. The squad could potentially go down here. If the Catachins have their own reliable, they could potentially kill that Tactical Marine squad, but the Tactical Marines are going to be able to get away. These Catachins are still in melee combat, might, might find themselves a little bit overextended here at this point. They're so low right now, but it looks like they will be able to get away. Meanwhile, the other IG players are starting to come in. The Warlock is going to engage that Lord Commissar there with the Immolator, but the Immolator are not enough to finish it off, and the double CSM are just kind of sitting quite far back. Everyone on Red Team is just sitting around this beacon, relying very heavily on this beacon without this beacon. They're struggling. In fact, there's actually an Imperial Guard bunker going down here, which has now been upgraded to a medical bunker. The Warlock is going to go down, but should be in a position for Red Team to try and get a res, but with the bunker here, it's going to be really difficult for those units to edge forward. But now players are starting to tech up to Tier 2, with the exception of Red Team. In fact, Blue Team are all kind of teching up to Tier 2, or are already Tier 2. The red team are still very resolute on holding that area. In fact, they're using a lot of map control by only being in control of this area around the beacon. 495 VPs to 285. A very nice grenade attempt there by Quickso, but Cyrus does dodge it in time. Now, red team with this beacon have been able to hold their ground, but the problem is a blue team have spread out around the rest of the map here especially on the top side of the map, but the ASM are going to just go in and engage here. There's nothing to be forced off. In fact, there is. There's a flame attack called Marine Squad here. They could try and capture the bunker and try and edge forward of their map control, but with the DACA, what's that ability? It's preventing these tactical marines from firing, but the Cabal Spear on the play Champion is going to be enough to force off that Lord General. He is so low right now inside that bunker. He is definitely going to go down. At the same time, the looters in for the flank. The play Champion could go inside that bunker at this point and should potentially consider it by a Manticore strike going to go down onto the CSM and Heretic Squad of the units are not retreating away in time, they're actually taking quite a lot of damage here from that meanwhile there's just more engagements going on, it's just a constant fight here the drop pod coming in to get an extra tactical marine squad, these ASMs without their sergeant taking a lot of damage, that bunker is still up for the grabs for anyone, there is nothing on it, there is no explosive to prevent enemy units from capturing and there's a lot of damage coming in from this Bar Spear Plague Champion as those guardsmen get a little bit too close, there's a lot of AoE damage coming in here and all these units are so grouped up here for Odnut, he does need to be careful, double flame attacks come marines and flame attacks are going to actually go in for the capture and grenade launcher heretics, look at the amount of guardsmen that are just dying and now there is nothing for them to reinforce from, they are going to be forced off the field completely but more attacks come marines are just dying here. So losing a lot of heavy infantry models and is still nowhere near to towards tier 2. He is the last person. He is going to be so far behind in terms of technology right now. Meanwhile, the looters up top find themselves overextended, but with the stomp from the Sentinel, the ASM are unable to finish off that looter squad with a grenade. And the looters are trying to focus down on the bunker here, but trying to trying to kill the tactical marines inside the play champion going in for a res as well it does have a deep mucus discharge to actually heal units in an area there's actually a creepy barrage coming in for a corn that looks like it's going to miss quite a few units but we'll be able to knock back some CSM and red team are now starting to try and expand out of their base a little bit they do need to focus on the VPs given that they are 300 VPs behind meanwhile pushing ever so slowly forward here gain control of that bunker is a big win for them 
but how long until they lose it? These tactical marines are edging it further and further forward, but looters do an insane amount of damage at close range with the tactical marines. Are able to actually get around that? They're able to circumvent the arc there, and are going to try and push further forward. But the tactical marines are only on 200 HPs. Even the sparsers could probably give them a run for their money at twice the amount of health there. The tactical marines will back away. The sparsers are a little bit reluctant about pushing further forward, given that this guardian weapons team defending the area. Wraith guard popping in and dire avengers. Both of the Exarchs now in tier 2 will find themselves much more tanky and much harder for Imperial Guard to actually deal with with that passive range damage reduction. And the Plague Champion is going to go in, focusing down catchers here when there's more Guardsmen and groups have, but the Plague Champion is going to get forced off. The Bar Spear, very difficult to actually pull off against Imperial Guard, given that it's such a short range weapon. Trying to walk up to multiple Guardsmen squads can be quite difficult. We do have a bit of a sneaky bash going on from some Catachins with a Melsa gun, the Sergeant with the Melsa providing that much needed damage boost against generators, but ASM going to be jumping into the Catachins, they need to be careful, Catachins do have 20 power melee per model, but Tatsukumri is going to try and force melee, going to try and finish off the squad and retreat here with just melee damage, but it's not going to be enough, these Tatsukumri Marines are not really doing too much, but a very nice grenade from the scouts though, wipes that Catachin squad, that's a big loss there for Korn, because that squad was upgraded with both the Sergeant and I believe it would have had the Demolition Man as well. And the shooters are pushing in, Red Team are still falling further behind in VPs, 495 to 151, Red Team really struggling in this game to actually get out away from that beacon, They're struggling to actually expand further out, but some Bloodless is going to engage here, getting a special by the Lord Commissar, that's very unfortunate, as soon as you teleport in, and these Bloodlesses without any worship support whatsoever are going to be forced off very quickly, and the Grenade Barrage coming in from the Heretics, these Heretics should have been worshipping, if those Heretics were worshipping the Bloodlesses would have stood a much better chance in that engagement, would be able to stay in the fight for quite some time, and a very nice Sunbomb, very well placed there by Cyrus, not hitting the ally Lord Commissar that was in the area, and only hitting those enemy units. A nice creeping barrage here from Korn does knock back all the units all the way close to the bunker, but the Lord Commissar overextended there. He's going to get forced off, and Cyrus looks like he's going to go in for some stick bombs here. Their units are so grouped up right now, but these stick bombs are bound to hit something, and they do. They do hit a CSM squad, but unfortunately, not killing any models there for Cyrus. The Sensor does push in further forward, does need to be a little bit careful here as the ASM now engage, but they are so low themselves. The Sensor going to go in for a stomp potentially. Doesn't look like it actually gets it in the end. There's a Manticore Strike going to go down. It actually kills, or doesn't actually kill Commander. That's already the Lord Commissar from earlier. Meanwhile, Bloodlessers are going to try and circumvent these looters by face shifting here, but there are Ogrens right on top of them. A second set of Bloodlessers on the field here. Desperate need of worship for these Bloodlessers. They are so low right now, and without any face shift available, Bloodlessers are immune to suppression though, because they are demonic infantry. Allowing them to just walk up to the looters, even though it's not the best decision sometimes, given that looters do the highest point blank damage in the game out of any suppression team. Meanwhile, there's Tech Marine here armed with a Melsa gun, which is a very interesting choice, given that Red Team don't actually, or sorry, Blue Team don't have any vehicles with the exception of the Manticore, which has actually fallen down. Eldar has managed to push his way down towards the boss and forcing Korn off the field. The Tech Marine does fall down in this engagement to Catachins and the Commerce. The Commando Knob are just sneaking their way in. These Guardsmen are very grouped up here. And CSM currently unupgraded. Some upgrades would be well suited for them. Even just the Eternal War and the Sergeant or the Aspiring Champion to lead the squad would help out quite a bit, especially when you can get the Slaughter ability on cooldown every two minutes after. Slaughter providing the CSM with a ranged damage boost or allowing them to go into melee combat with chainsaws and bolt pistols instead. It does have a long cooldown, but it is an incredibly strong ability being able to switch to a melee stance unit. Very effective against Imperial Guard. But when they do have ogres on the field, it does make it a little bit hard to actually just go in. But these ogres trying to tie up a Wraith Guard squad. Dire Avengers backing away. The Guardian Weapons team going to get caught out here by some smoke. And there's now a looter tank on the field. Cyrus going in with his stick bombs here. Or oh, in fact, the stun bomb, sorry. We'll be able to stun that squad, but because they're retreating away, the stun bump doesn't do too much. And Red Team have actually managed to expand their way out. There's also a shrine of Nurgle on the beacon as well, so allow for quicker healing in the area. But they've managed to get a generator farm bottom, and they've managed to secure this natural generator farm up top. And in fact, they're going in for a capture on another generator farm. And this might be the turnaround here for Red Team as they really start to expand out their control now. They are in control of the majority of the map after the Blue Team held vast control for so long. 
with the looter tank pushing on the doorstep here. It's going to be very difficult once again for them to push away from the beacon. However, uh, they are quite spread out right now, but the other units around the beacon are going to find themselves struggling. They're going to find themselves a little bit trapped here as all the units push in through. And there's now a second looter tank in the area. A flag in drop down on top of them. That is incredibly harsh in the area. The Bright Lance weapons team does fall down, and the two looter tanks are firing away. The Shrine of Nurgle does fall down. The double looter tanks are really hurting hard here. And with the Ogres to tie up the Wraith Guard squad, there is no AV in this area that can deal with two looter tanks and Eldar losing a Wraith Guard squad potentially here they had got so low but the Exarch squad or the Exarch for the squad actually gets away there a noxious cloud on top of the army and even the Lehman Russ a very oh wow a very nice orb of the Omnis idea if there's only something to follow that up and I've actually got a sound bug and I'm back Tech Marine coming in here with a really nice orb the Omnis eyes. I said just before I got cut off there by the soundbag, able to catch out here two looter tanks. If this was combined with a nuke, this could be absolutely brutal. There's an orbital awesome bombardment about to go down, but the orb the Omnis eye only lasts 12 seconds. But is that going to be enough to actually take down these two looter tanks? The beams do actually deal some serious damage before it actually finishes going off, but the combo is going to fail here. But a very nice attempt nonetheless. Meanwhile, Bloodlessers and Guardsmen very low here on the retreat path. One Guardsman squad there for Corn able to get away because the Zinch CSM were not focusing them down. Bloodlessers are running away. There's a second squad still on the field here, but unable to actually finish off anything. And with the two looter tanks moving in and a Lehman Rustic to boot as well, these Chaos Forces will find themselves heavily unmatched. Look at the damage from this looter tank. The main battle cannon is so effective against infantry on the looter tank, it's unbelievable. One of the highest damaging weapons in the game against infantry in my opinion. So much burst, so much potential to just take down models. And now red team in control, or not, sorry not red team, but blue team in control of the bunker once again that they put down much earlier on. 340 VP to so 151. Red team have done a good job at catching up so far, but how are they going to deal with the three tanks in the field? With a fourth one on the way here, look at the damage from the blue tank, it just burst down the ASM! That is incredible. Those ASM were upgraded with the Melsa Bomb. They were worth quite a bit, to be honest. Could have been upgraded to Vanguard Veterans later on as the game progressed if they were not that well leveled up. But the looser tank coming in there, this shot is so devastating against infantry. Lumen Rust is going to start tearing down this bottom generator farm since it's more beneficial to red team than blue team to have up. Red team are so far ahead in terms of power income right now. With a generator down here, a generator up top. They still don't actually have this fully loaded up yet, but they do have more power overall in comparison to the blue team who are only regaining their one natural. But in terms of power, red team are probably behind it overall in terms of the actual power saved up throughout the game, given the fact that blue team did have the map control for much longer. Meanwhile, another creeping barrage is going to go down and catch a nice CSM model there. Some ogrens are making their way towards the top. We're going to find themselves heavily outmatched against two worship bloodletter squads. And these ogrens taking quite a lot of damage here, actually losing two models as the Zinch CSM as well, doing full damage to super heavy infantry as well. They're so effective against all kinds of infantry, doing at least one-to-one -one damage against all targets. But look at the loose tank though, just bursting down a CSM squad. The AoE damage combined with the massive single target damage together just hurts so much, but this looter tank now in need of repair, neither looter tank does actually have the improved armor plating, and with a last cannon turret up top, they will need a bit of extra tankiness, or they will need to rely on the infantry to push further forward beforehand. Meanwhile, four tanks now out here for a blue team, red team will need to invest, by the way, might even catch out a looter tank here. These tactical marines coming in for a little nice push here with the tech marine with his melter gun and the signum armor able to pop down a looter tank very quickly. The signum armor with the mark target ability does work against vehicles and combine that with two missile launched tactical marines can do some significant damage to an unupgraded looter tank. Meanwhile, Eldar is starting to push in. They do have a D cannon down here. This looter squad is a little bit low right now. There is a second looter squad at the same time, but Wraith Guard is going to be pushing further in. But the walkthrough is going to pull in the looters. A nice attempt as a combo dev is actually going to do a little bit more friendly fire damage than enemy damage, but the looter squad will go down. Meanwhile, up top always kicking off now. A rocks is about to go down. Bloodless take a lot of damage. These heretics need to start worshipping these bloodlesses. They need to stop being in engagement themselves. They just need to worship the bloodlesses and let them be the ones to do the work throughout this engagement. Meanwhile, there's just so many tanks on the field now. 
four tanks in the top lane, three Lehman Russes, one loose tank, red team just gonna get forced off the field, there's just so many tanks, there's an Eldritch Storm about to go down, might be able to catch out this Lunar tank, which got a little bit of half block there, no Eldritch Storm, able to take down one tank, but I feel like overall it may have been slightly wasted at only taking down one tank, although it's better than getting nothing by any means. I feel like it could have been used in the engagement or could have been com combined with something else instead to try and wipe more stuff in comparison to that. Meanwhile, Cyrus down quite a lot of units now. Losing those two looter tanks hurt him quite hard there and down to just a shooter boy squad and a looter squad. is going to get a battle wagon out now but did lose another looted squad as well earlier from the Warlock in that previous engagement. The D-Cannon is firing away. Singularity here could be absolutely brutal in combination with a warp throw here, the Singularity will actually fail here because the D-Cannon had to retreat away before it was able to finish casting the Singularity. You know, Looters are set up as well to suppress these Dire Avengers and as the Lehman Russes push in, I mean the Wraith Guard stand in the way of these Looter Tanks, but Looter Tanks with a Vanquisher turret can easily do a significant amount of damage, or single target damage in fact, against those but there's actually an avatar on the way down towards the boss, but the battle wagon and two demon rusters should be able to kite this avatar. The avatar is a ranged unit. Meanwhile, Tower Avengers getting hit hard by the boom shot there from that battle wagon. Meanwhile, down in the center of the map, Ogrens are going to find themselves heavily overextended against the two bloodletter squads, in fact. Super heavy infantry taking bonus damage from power melee. But these double bloodletters might not work out too well given the sheer amount of vehicles on the field for a blue team at this point. In. But the double bloodletter is going to be very effective against Odd Nerd given that he's relying heavily on the infantry and only has a single Lehman Russ house on the field. You know, the commander that I'm trying to go in here does have his default weapon still. I'm surprised to have not seen the shotgun from him or even the commander not miss our launcher, but given that there's no vehicles for red team, it's not necessarily needed. A nice stun bomb though on the retreat path of the commander and obviously protects him from getting melee down by any other units and these worshipping heretics are going to fall down and meanwhile the battle wagon is going to go in. These tactical marines are taking so much damage right now and without the beacon everyone is retreating back to base. A very nice nuke going down here for a time but none shall fall activated onto the Lord Commissar. No model can die until the Commissar himself dies and that will keep all of the units protected in the area. The Lehman Russ are very low and the Commissar getting pulled away from his friendly units. He does have to remain fairly close to them for this to be effective. You know, Dire Avengers are just fleeting in here, <laughs> trying to force melee onto the Guardsmen with the Wraith Guard coming in. The Avatar is pushing further forward against these Kassikans. The Avatar has already taken quite a lot of damage and will continue to get kited around as well by all the other units. You know, another Singularity is going to go down, but it's actually going to catch out some friendly Dire Avengers here by the looks of things. That only catches out the Exarch for that Dire Avengers squad, but the Guardsmen squad overall Looks like it will be able to live. The sergeant will be able to tank a fair amount there. There is a last cannon and two missile launcher tactical marines pushing in right now, but there's just so many vehicles on the map that it's not even going to be enough to have two missile launcher tactical marines. Meanwhile, the battle wagon going to miss it's a big shot there. D cannon is still set up in the bottom and decides to retreat away at a good time before it actually goes down, or where the Lehman Rusters might try and chase it down. And now the commander and I'm guessing that missile launcher, especially now that there is a fire prism out on the field here for Jake, that missile launcher getting a rear armor hit onto the fire prism will bring it below half health and will be absolutely devastating. But blue team still losing quite a few VPs there from red team being able to expand out so rapidly there. Red team catching up in terms of VPs, bringing the VP difference now from 300 down to just 80 and also having another beacon up in the similar places to where they had one before. That's why they're taking a little bit of damage there from the fire prison, the focus beam doing quite a lot of damage that power wagon just popping the wraith guard model though. Very effective. You know, it looks like there's going to be a big push up top between chaos and space rings and even some plague rings on the map. Personally, I dislike Plague Marines against tanks, given that Plague Marines are such a slow unit. If you're able to hit a tank, it works out really well, but if you're not able to hit a tank, it really doesn't work out too well. And the Bloodless are going to engage here. The Lord Commissar himself is really low, does not have the stubbornness ability. Without the stubbornness ability, he does not have the tankiness needed to actually support all his guardsmen with none shall fall. You know, these Ogres are just shredding some CSM because the Bloodless are not supporting them whatsoever. In fact, the Bloodless do retreat away. And the orb of the Omzai there from the Hecamarine once again catching out a Lehman Russ and able to catch out the Sentinel at the same time. It does stun units for 12 seconds. It is going to hit hard when it does hit. But that Sentinel though is fairly tanky. It is level 4. It does have 1000 health of heavy infantry. 
and the Ogrens are just going to try and chase down the remaining units. The Plague Champion is armed with his Plague Fist and is going to try and give some support, but without the Armor of Pestilence, the Plague Champion isn't going to be able to do too much though. The Avatar, while still alive, is going to potentially die here at this point. Lehman Russ is going to carry on chasing. Flash gets on the tail as well. Flash gets with their blasters, with their psychic damage. Very effective against heavy infantry, super heavy infantry, although better against blobs. You know, the Bass Wagon might find itself a little bit overextended. Goes going for the boom shot here. The Avatar might try and trade its life here with the Bass Wagon that is actually able to kill the Bass Wagon, which has now lost control and just crashes into a requisition point. Meanwhile, the Avatar has 66 HP. Going to try and path itself away from the engagement. It's actually not going away there. In the end, he actually does get clipped by another unit there. Meanwhile, Red Team gets a hold in the bunker. It looks like it was earlier on in the very beginning of the game with Red Team game put pushed constantly to the beacon and getting locked in. Meanwhile another creeping barrage going to go down, going to knock all the units away from the beacon. All the units do retreat back to the beacon however and there's some more units on the way, some devastators and some missile launch tactical marines to try and counter these Lehman Russes that are just dominating with their Vanquisher cannons, able to sit so far back and just pick off as many models as they want. They are both level 2, soon to hit level 3 but the devastator is going to get a shot in with a rip armor hit. But the Lehman Rasto is the tankiest tank by far. Able to, or with the with a high amount of health at 800 with the elite tank crew, and also at the same time having a 35% damage resistance to all kind of damage as well, makes it deceptively tanky. You know, Bloodless is going to go in, but without any worship support whatsoever, they're going to actually struggle. Flash gets and shoots is so effective against these Bloodlesses. Though Flash gets are best with their default weapon against Bloodlesses. There is going to be a drop pod coming in here. It's actually going to be a Venerable Drenor. You don't actually see these too often, but a Venerable Drenor is going to hit this blue team up top very hard here. Able to catch out some units already. Able to catch out Ogre and some Guardsman models. Going to get a nice little bit of XP here. If the Venerable Drenor can be kept alive, it can be absolutely devastating. But the problem is with the Venerable Drenor is the fact that there's already so many counters on the field for it. A melee walker is very difficult to try and pull off in tier 3 unless you are vastly ahead of your opponent. But given that blue team have been so far ahead throughout this game, have had multiple tanks out on the field already, it's going to be very difficult for the Venerable Drenor to actually do too much. A very nice Eldritch though, to catch out some guards with squads, but the Eldritch just barely missing the second squad. It was so close to killing it. In fact, the Venerable Drenor is already dead in this top side of the map. The Cardinal with the missile launcher and another Lehman with the Vanquisher Cannon is able to finish off that Venerable Dreadnought and it is going to be very short lived and as much as Red Team were able to hold because of that Venerable Dread they're now going to just get forced off the field once again. A turret is going to go down here, this turret could be upgraded to a missile launcher turret which would do a good job at forcing off the Lehman or at least scaring it off a little bit. But we'll see if it does get upgraded, it might be kept into suppression formation right now, just so it can actually defend off the infantry while these plague marines find off the Lehman. But this Lehman is going to take a lot of damage here, or it won't take too much damage in fact, sorry, the plague marines will take quite a lot of damage here, trying to actually hold. And the turret has actually gone down already. You know, our red team are just going to get forced back to the beacon once again, they're going to get all the way back, even though they're able to push out so far, they don't actually have an answer to all of these tanks in the field. There are four Lehman Russes with another battle wagon on the way. Corn with three Lehmans down in the bottom side, and I imagine that this bunker is going to be upgraded to a repair bunker at some point just to support all the Lehman Russes because there's only a single Guardsman squad. And there you go, you can see the Lehman is now repairing the Dire Avengers are forced away here. And red team down to just 20 VPs need to make a push now if they actually want to remain in this game. Bloodletters are pushing further forward and a lot of units are just streaming towards this VP here but it's actually a triple cap at the moment here and it looks like red team are going to actually get forced off this game and blue team are going to be the winners here. Red team desperately trying to hold for so long where able to actually hold their position very well. The amount of pressure that blue team had put onto them and red team were able to hold and even look like red team were going to come back in this game with their rapid expansion in the center of the game but blue team coming back strong was having so much economy saved up for so long able to just pump out tank after tank and red team struggling to actually keep up with those tier 3 units